In our course, and in statistics in general, we almost always assume that we have a random sample. So it makes sense that we take a little bit of time right here in section 1.3 to talk about a random sample and what it is and how we're going to obtain it. So a random sampling process is any process that uses chance or randomness to select the individuals from the population that will be included in your sample. So you're using some kind of random process to choose people. You're not using a bias process or some kind of convenient process. All right. There are lots of different ways to do this, and we'll talk about several of them. The simplest one is called a simple random sample. A simple random sample is a sampling procedure for which each possible sample of a given size little n is taken from a population size capital N is equally likely to be the one obtained. In other words, every sample of size 5, for example, is just as likely as any other sample of size 5 from the population size you know, 5,000, something like that. So little n is the sample size, capital N is the population size. Now the sampling frame is the list of all these people within the population who could be sampled. So for example, let's say we want to talk about um, all the students that are taking um, classes at Jackson College this fall. So the sampling frame might be the list of all college students at Jackson College in the fall. And that would be the frame is the list. And then if you have some kind of random procedure to choose a sample size of, let's say, size 100 from that population of 5,000, say. So every um, population of size 100 is just as likely as any other sample of size 100 to be taken from that population. That would be a simple random sample. And the frame would be the list that you would go to to get that sample from as opposed to a convenient sample. A convenient sample is a sample in which the individuals are easily obtained and not based on randomness. So for example, instead of calling up students randomly or emailing them randomly, we just go over to one of the buildings that's holding classes and we just ask every student that we see in the hallway. That would be a convenient sample. Now hypothetically speaking, a random sample would have no bias. It should be truly representative of the population. Right? So we will often use the words in this course, random sample or random unbiased sample. They're going to work interchangeably and together for us because um, for our purposes, random and, un and bias are going to go hand to hand. Um, if they have a random sample, then you're not going to have a bias sample. Um, there are many, many other ways to take random unbiased samples than a simple random sample. We are just going with a very basic one to begin with. So. Let's suppose you're going to do a study of sexism in cartoons. CNN published a list of the 50 greatest cartoon characters in 2002, and here they are. Bugs Bunny, one of my personal favorites, is at the top of the list. You're going to take a random sample of them and find out what proportion of them are played by females. All right, so we have the full list here on this page. All right, so let's start with the beginning. Explain why the variable rank is qualitative. Well, rank is actually both a qualitative and an ordinal variable. Um, it's a numeric value label that identifies the position of the cartoon character, but you cannot perform meaningful calculations on this. For example, how much better is number one than number two? How much better is number eight than number 14? You have no idea. You don't know if eight meant that there were um, tons more votes for Charlie Brown and Snoopy, or if there were um, people ranked it higher on some kind of system, you just have no idea at all. So you cannot do any meaningful calculations like subtraction, addition, you certainly can't find the mean of any of this. So rank is qualitative, even though it's a number, it's still qualitative, but it's actually an ordinal qualitative number because you can tell there's an order. There's a first one, which is Bugs Bunny, and a second one, which is Homer Simpson, and a third one, which is Rocky and Bullwinkle, one of my sister's favorites, right? So first, second, third, you know who's considered better than whom, but you don't know by how much. All right, explain how you could take a convenient sample of size 10 of these characters. Well, there are a lot of different ways. You could just pick the 10 that you like the best, or you could pick the 10 that you like the least, or the 10 that you don't know, because there's got to be some old ones in here that you might not have ever heard of. Um, or let's say you just go with the first 10 or the last 10. There are lots of different ways that you could just pick a sample that's convenient for you. Now, how could we use a calculator to find a simple random sample of 10 characters? 
That's what we're really here for. So let's pull up a calculator. Now this, I'm going to first do this with a color calculator, kind of the newer system, and then I'm actually going to show it with the older system. So if you have an older calculator, just kind of zip ahead by a minute or so, and you'll see a different calculator screen. So let me start with this one. The process is going to be similar for both calculators. You press math, you go to the probability menu, in the old calculators it's PRB, PR, probability, and I'm going to choose number 8, random integer no repeat. My lowest number was 1, Bugs Bunny, comma, which is that button right there, and then my highest number was 50, because there are 50 possible, with Tom and Jerry being 50. And then I want to choose a random sample of size 10. So on the new calculators, you can actually put comma 10 right here. The old calculators, you cannot do that. I'll show you that in a minute. So rand int no repeat, 1 comma 50 comma 10. And then I press enter. It will give me a sample of 50, like cartoon number 48, cartoon number 46, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I can go from there and figure back out what those cartoons were. There, I typed up my sample, and you can write it with just the numbers for our purposes, but technically the sample is actually all these different characters. Um, Bobby Hill was number 48, Woody Woodpecker was 46, um, Charlie Brown and Snoopy was 40, or it was number 8, excuse me, and so on. Um, but for our purposes, it just takes forever to write all this stuff, so we just um, write the numbers down. Now remember, you had to use the right arrow to get over and see the last number because 10 was a little bit too wide for our calculator. All right, now let's show with the other calculator real quickly. And if you have a color calculator, you can just kind of skip this next little bit. So I'm going to change my view one second. All right, so this is what an older calculator looks like. So I pressed math, and then I go over to PRB, which is the probability menu. And down at the bottom, it should have rand int no repeat. So I'm going to pick number 8. Now, the, with the, the way the old calculators work is you can type 1, 50, but you cannot type the 10. You just have to say 1 to 50, and it will actually just give you a list, 1 to 50, and you have to count out the first 10. So 2 is the first one, 47 is the second one, 27 is the third one, and so on. And you would write out the first 10 numbers that you find there. That's the best you can do with an old calculator, but you cannot do the extra comma 10 that a new calculator can do. So it actually is giving you a list of all 50 numbers in a scrambled order, if you will. So it scrambled the 50 numbers and you just pick the first 10 for the old calculators. Let's actually stop right there with this video and we'll pick back up with the examples in the next video.